today we're going to talk about problem solving with quadratics. Okay? I actually want to start on the back of your worksheet, so would you please turn it over to the back? What are we going to use when we're solving problems on the back? Uh, oh, the discriminant? How did you know it was a discriminant? Because it says hint. Oh, it's in the title? Problem solving with the discriminant? Okay. The first hint that it gives us is the vertical motion formula. Okay. The vertical motion formula is d equals rt minus 5t squared. So first of all, do you recognize that as a quadratic? Yeah. Yes, because it has a what? A squared, right? So you know it's a quadratic because it has a squared. So we're going to look a little closer at these problems. Okay. A target plane flies at 2,100 meters. An anti-aircraft gun fires a projectile with an initial upward velocity of 200 meters per second. Will the projectile ever reach the altitude of the target plane? Now, first thing I want you to recognize is that I'm not asking, will the anti-aircraft gun hit the plane, right? Will the missile hit the plane? I'm not asking that. First of all, that deals with aim and air speed and wind and all sorts of stuff that we're not concerned about right now, okay? I'm asking, will it ever get high enough to hit the plane? Does that make sense? Okay? So I want you to think about this for me for just a second, okay? Where's my paper? So here's what, here's what we're thinking about. Let me move this up so we can still see the problem, okay? Here's a plane flying along at 2,100 meters, right? Here's the ground. Anti-aircraft gun. I know, I know that you sometimes get jealous of my drawing skills. It's fine. I'm sure you can do just as good. Thank you. Okay. So what are the options here? Okay. Think about what the options are. The anti-aircraft gun could shoot the missile and it could do that, right? Where it would get to 2100 how many times? Twice, okay? It could shoot like that and get to 2100 once. Or, remember we're not talking about will it hit the plane, we're saying will it get high enough, remember, okay? So aren't these the three options? <clears throat> but guys, <clears throat> when we talked about, <clears throat> excuse me, when we talked about discriminant before, didn't we talk about three options? What were the three options when we talked about discriminant before? Positive, negative, or what? Zero. Those were the three options we had, right? And if the discriminant was positive, what does that say? Two real solutions, right? If the discriminant was negative, what did that say? Two imaginary, right? And if it was zero, what did that say? One real solution, a double root, right? So I need to figure out which, which one of those things mean which one of these. Well, what do you think? If it, if it gets as high as the plane does twice, or sorry, yeah, as high as the plane does twice, what kind of discriminant do you think that is? So that would be a positive discriminant because there's two real solutions. It hits the same height twice. So this red one is if it is positive. So if I did the discriminant of the problem here and I got a positive number, what's the answer? Yes, right? What about the orange one? What about this middle one? What kind of discriminant is that one? 
that's a zero because it gets there once. Remember a double root, right? It's when, it, when, when the vertex was sitting right on the axis. Well, do you see the vertex is sitting on, right on the line that we're trying to get to? So does that make sense that it would be zero? So then what's the last one? This one would be negative and it wouldn't ever reach the height, right? So you told me a second ago that if it was positive, your answer would be yes, because it would get that high, right? Uh, what if the discriminant is zero? That would be yes too. That would also be yes, because it does get there, but once, right? So what if it's negative, what's the answer? No, no because it doesn't ever get that high. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the problem then. <laughs> Thinking about what's, what's happening, right? What's happening, let's go back to the problem. We're given the vertical motion formula, d equals rt minus 5t squared. We're given that the plane flies at 2100 meters. And we're given that the, the anti-aircraft gun fires the projectile with an initial upward velocity of 200 meters per second. So what goes where into the vertical motion formula? Um, meters per second is r. Meters per second is r, right? So this is r. And what's 2100? So it would be, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now let's, let's substitute everything in that we know. 2100 equals 200t minus 5t squared. Now, why didn't we plug in anything for t? Well, it doesn't tell us anything about t, right? Does it even talk about time at all? No, it doesn't, right? That's kind of how you know that you're talking about a discriminant and not the whole quadratic formula, because the whole quadratic formula would be solving for t, wouldn't it? It would have to say, when will it hit the plane? Well, we're not trying to figure out when will it hit it. We're trying to figure out if it's going to get high enough to hit it. And we use the discriminant to figure that out. So in order to, to even solve for the discriminant, what does this quadratic have to be set equal to? zero. So I'm going to subtract 2100 from both sides, but I'm also going to get it in order at the same time. Are you okay with that? Yeah. What do I mean by in order? What's going to come first? Mm -hmm. T squared, right? So negative 5t squared plus 200t minus 2100. <clears throat> okay so far? Yeah. So if I'm using, if I'm finding the discriminant, remind me what the discriminant is again? b squared minus 4ac? Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? Where is that found? It's in the quadratic formula. Where in the quadratic formula? It's underneath the root sign, right? It's on top of the fraction underneath the root sign. So b squared minus 4a is our discriminant. That's what we're finding right here. Okay? So b squared would be 200 squared minus 4 times a which is negative 5, <clears throat> times c, which is negative 2100. Now, would it have helped if we would have come over here and put a and b and c? Yeah. Okay, do it then. <coughs> now, do you want to do all of this in your head? Yeah, I don't either. So we put this straight in the calculator, 200 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 2100. Now when you do that, what do you get? Negative 2,000, right? Negative 2,000 is my discriminant. Now I need you to answer the question. No. Because why? It's negative. It's, negative. it's not ever going to get to that height, so my answer is no. Can you just go through here and put no, yes, no, yes? Yes, no. No, without this work, this answer is not real, is it? This is the proof that I know that this is the correct answer. You understand that? Any questions about that? Look at number three. 
In order to dunk a basketball, Jim Shorts must jump 1.2 me. I know it's funny. It's okay. 1.2 meters above the floor. He can jump with an initial upward velocity of 5.1 meters per second. Can Jim dunk the ball? Now we're not asking about his skill, and is he able to, you know, aim the basketball right to be able to dunk it? We're saying what? Like I could draw this all again, but with a basketball hoop and a boy jumping, right? Jim, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to make you even more jealous of my drawing skills. Right. But I've got to start here. D equals RT minus 5T squared, don't I? Oops. D equals RT minus 5T squared. So what goes in for this particular formula? What goes where? What's my D? Well, that's meters per second. Where does that go? Yeah, that goes for R, right? This is R. What is 1.2? Oh, that would be how That would be the distance, right? So 1.2 equals 5.1 T minus 5 T squared. So what do I have to do first? Make it equal to zero. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 1.2 from both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to get my quadratic in order. So negative 5t squared plus 5.1t minus 1.2. Now I use my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. b squared is 5.1 squared. Minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 1.2. So 5.1 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 1.2. What'd you get? Uh, 2.01. I'm going to go back to this picture just so we can think about it. What does that mean? It means what? Yes. Yes. Because it's a positive number. So yes, he can reach to dunk the ball. Yes, I will. Any questions? Good to go? Okay. Vertical motion formula again. So it gives us to, it gives it to us again. We're going to be using the vertical motion formula. Please remember, I'm going to go back to this drawing. We're talking about the vertical motion. Vertical. We're not talking about how far the missile went. We're talking about how high the missile went. Does everybody understand that? We're not talking about how far Jim can jump. We're talking about how high he can jump. Does everybody understand that? Okay. A football is kicked into the air with an initial upward velocity of 25 meters per second. Well, the first thing I want to do is figure <coughs> out what equation I'm using for problem number one. D equals what? RT. RT, but don't I know R in this problem? Yeah. D equals 25t minus 5t squared. So I'm going to use this for this whole problem. Does everybody understand that? A says calculate its height after two seconds. Huh. Two in for t, right? Isn't t time? Right? Even if you didn't remember that, you could look up here and it says t seconds. That's time. So two in for t. So 25 times 2 minus 5 times 2 squared. Now we can use our calculator for this one, but this one seems kind of easy, right? What's 2 times 25? 50. 50. What's 2 squared? 4 times 5? Close. 20. So what's 50 minus 20? 50 minus 20 is 30. 30. 30 what? Meters per second. Yeah, 
30 meters. How, is it, how important is it that we label our answer? Very important. Very important. Without the label, it's not right. Okay. Calculate its height. Calculate the height of the football after three seconds. What do we do here? Yeah, instead of plugging in two, this time I'm going to plug in three. So 25 times 3 minus 5 times 3 squared. Uh, what's 3 squared? 9, 9 times 5? 45. What is 25 times 3? 75 minus 45? Huh. So are you saying when we kick the ball, here's the football, there's the laces, laces out, right? When we kick the football, it goes up, and after two seconds, it goes flat, and then it comes back down. Is that what happens? No. No, you know better than to know that a football doesn't go flat. What happens? It goes, it goes, it goes up, up and then comes back, back down. down, right? But when was this? That was two seconds. When was this? That was three seconds, wasn't it? Okay? Does that make sense? And this height is what? 30 meters. Does everybody understand what happened? Yes. Okay. When will it be 20 meters above the ground? Um, what do I do there? Yeah, you put 20 and 15. Oh, for, okay, so 20 equals 25t minus 5t squared. So now it's asking me when, so it's asking me to solve for t. So now I have to solve the quadratic, don't I? So let's get it equal to zero then. So I'm gonna subtract 20 from both sides. That gives me zero equals negative 5t squared plus 25t minus 20. Now, did you notice that I got it in order at the same time? That's a good idea, isn't it? Okay, because now I have to decide, how should I solve this? I know five ways, right? I can't do square roots, because there's a t term, so that's out. I don't really want to graph it, so that's out. Completing the square is hardly ever gonna be my first choice. I can do it, I just, so I can either factor it or I can use quadratic formula. What do you want? Okay, quadratic formula. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What question are people asking me right now? Can I put my work on another sheet of paper? Yes. Yes. Always, as long as you keep the work with this paper, right? Okay. Now I'm going to keep on going down here because I have a little bit of room down here and I'm not worried about that. If you're worried about that, please feel free to do work on another sheet of paper. Okay? X equals negative 25 plus or minus the square root of 25 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 20, 225 all over negative 10. Oops, I forgot a 5 right there. Do you know the square root of 225? No, I don't. Six. 15. Oh. 15. <laughs> X equals negative 25 plus or minus 15 over negative 10. What is negative 25 plus 15? Negative 10 divided by negative 10? So 1. What is negative 25 minus 15? <clears throat> negative 25 minus 15. Negative 40. Negative 40 divided by negative 10. 
4. Now please go back and answer the question. When will it be 20 meters above the ground? Wait, twice? It's going to be 20 meters above the ground twice? So if this is 20 meters, we're saying at one second it's 20 meters above the ground and then again at four seconds it's 20 meters above the ground? Yeah. That makes sense now when we think about it, doesn't it? So one second and four seconds. When will the ball hit the ground? Oh. When will the ball hit the ground? Yeah, we can guess. That's not going to do us any good, is it? we got to solve this. Well, guys, remember we're talking about vertical motion formula? So we're talking about how high the ball is above the ground, right? How high is the ball above the ground when the ball hits the ground? Zero meters. So what do I plug in for D? Zero. Zero, Zero equals 25T minus 5T squared. So when, it's, when there's only two terms, yes, I could use a quadratic formula, but factoring would be so much easier, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's take out a, a negative 5T or a 5t, either one. Which one? 5t or negative 5? Negative. Okay, so if we take out a negative 5t, I have negative 5 plus t left. And if that equals 0, what do I have to do with each one of these factors right here? Negative 5t equals 0. Negative 5 plus t equals 0. So if I divide both sides by negative 5, t equals 0. And if I add 5 to both sides, t equals 5. So once again, I got two answers, t equals 0 and t equals 5. But I need to answer the question, when will the ball hit the ground? At 0 seconds and at 5 seconds. So make sure you're answering the question and not just reading numbers. When will the ball hit the ground? Think about the picture. Right, when was it at 0 seconds? whenever we first kicked it, right? So is that part of the answer that it's wanting? Yes. It's not, no, right? When That's it when it started. When is it gonna hit the ground? At five seconds. So it's only five seconds. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Just so we're clear, 30 meters was the first answer, 30 meters was the second answer, one second and four seconds was the third answer, and five seconds was the fourth answer. Now, how much easier did I just make it on myself and yourself to find the answers? Pretty easier. If you're going to write it on this paper, I need you to make it easier on yourself and myself to see the answers. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Okay. I need to talk about part of number two real quick before I let you go. Okay? Now, unfortunately, the people online are not going to be able to see this. I still would like them to be able to hear it. I'm just going to be real careful. If I fall, help me up, okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm standing on my chair, right? I'm standing on my chair behind my desk. Where is the floor compared to my feet? Down below me, right? How far? About three feet. Three feet, right? Let's say three feet. We're, we're just estimating anyway, right? We're saying three feet. So look at part two. Or number two, part D. When will they hit the water, which is 50 meters below where you threw it? Isn't the floor below where I'm standing? Yeah. How would I put that number into an equation? Negative. Yes, I would have to use a negative. Guys, do we have negative distance? No, no we do not. There's not negative distance. But can there be distance below? There can be distance below, and how do I represent distance below when I'm using when I'm plugging numbers into equations? I have to use a negative. Okay? Can I have distance behind? Yeah, now not in this formula, right? Because we're talking about vertical motion. We're talking about up and down, right? Can I have negative time? No. Wait, yeah, you I guess you can. Just so 
can I have negative time? No. Right? We, we can't go back in time that I know of. Right? Except when did this class period start? About what? Like 20 minutes ago. So if I was trying to put that number into a formula to try to help try solve to for stuff, I would have to use what kind of number? A negative number. So can I do some math and get an answer when I'm trying to solve for distance or time and get a negative number and it still be right? Yes. yes, if I'm talking about below or before, right? Does that make sense? Does everybody understand that? Okay. Now, is it always right? It's not always right. If I'm standing on the middle of the football field kicking a football and I get a vertical distance that's negative, Bad. That's bad, that's bad, right? So We're not going into the football field to catch the ball or something like that, right? So I know I've got something wrong right there. But if I'm talking about like problem number two talks about standing on the top of a cliff and throwing it over the cliff, can I have a negative distance there? If I'm talking about standing on my chair and I'm talking about the floor, can I have negative distance yes. there? So yes, but it makes a difference about the problem, right? The problem is going to tell you, is the, does this negative number right here make sense or not? Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, and it means you messed up. Okay, so you need to take the context of the problem into account when you get a negative number and find out, does it even make sense for me to get a negative here? Does that make sense? Any questions? Okay.